Ah, Yellowstone, known for its beautiful landscapes, wildlife, and of course, its powerful geysers. But beneath that beauty lurks the threat of large-scale apocalyptic destruction. America's first national park actually sits atop what's known as a supervolcano, and is only one of many throughout the world. If one were to erupt, it would cover large amounts of the planet under a blanket of ash, hindering photosynthesis impossible and making a proper mess of things here on Earth. But fear not, for there is hope to fight back against these geothermal threats. No, it's not Pierce Brosnan or Linda Hamilton, but the real-life heroes at NASA who have come up with a wild plan that could freeze these super eruptions dead in their tracks. So what kind of insane plans have they concocted? Might it actually save us? Should we be worried about supervolcanoes at all? We thought these questions deserved a deeper dive here on Tuba Da Vinci. Special thanks to Aspiration for sponsoring this video. Get the Aspiration card and start planting trees with every purchase today. Yellowstone's largest, most popular geyser, Old Faithful, can spew between 3,700 and 8,400 gallons of steaming hot water over 180 feet into the air when she goes off. What causes these geothermal wonders? Well, it turns out that about 100 meters below the park lie a pair of reservoirs between 40 and 80 kilometers across filled with liquid hot magma. That's larger than the state of Rhode Island. Yellowstone isn't just any old boring volcano. No, no, it's actually what volcanologists have dubbed a super volcano. While that may sound very made up, it's actually quite real and quite terrifying. So what makes a super volcano so super? Well, volcanologists use what's known as the Volcano Explosivity Index to measure the destructive power of a given volcano by measuring things like the volume of material being produced in the eruption, the eruption cloud height, and other qualitative observations, using terms ranging from gentle to mega colossal. Sounds like a bit redundant, but the Volcano Explosivity Index, you can't make that up either, I suppose. Boring, non-explosive eruptions get a VE of zero. And the highest end of the spectrum, VE8, is for volcanoes that eject a minimum of 1,000 cubic kilometers of material into the air. These, my friends, are supervolcanoes. Right now, there are over a dozen active supervolcanoes in the world, four of which, including Yellowstone, live right here in the US. So you might be thinking at this point, okay, so we've seen big eruptions in the past, they didn't end the world, how much worse could a super eruption really be? <laughs> and the answer is that they are just so much worse. So get ready for some nightmare fuel, because this is what it would look like if Yellowstone erupted. It would begin with a series of earthquakes across the entire park that would last anywhere from two weeks to a few months. These earthquakes would break apart the rocks above these enormous magma chambers, triggering the eruption. As the magma chamber erupts, it would shoot a tower of ash over 50 kilometers into the atmosphere. That's over five times the size of Mount Everest, enough to bury neighboring states like Montana, Idaho, and the rest of Wyoming in over three feet of ash. And we're not even talking about the kind of ash you might sweep up off your fireplace. We're looking at a mixture of splintered rock and glass, ranging in size from tiny particles to massive boulders careening through the sky and across the ground at speeds of over 80 kilometers an hour. The immediately surrounding cities and states would fall subject to what is called pyroclastic flows, a high density mix of hot lava blocks, pumice, ash, and volcanic gases moving at very high speeds. These pyroclastic flows can shatter, bury, and carry away nearly every object in their path. And because of their range and temperature from 200 to 700 degrees Celsius, they can ignite fires and melt snow and ice. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about our sponsor, Aspiration. We live in an age where we expect our companies to not just do well, but to do good. But we often don't think this way about our finances. Unlike the big banks, Aspiration doesn't use your deposits to fund oil pipelines or turn your fees into campaign contributions for politicians working against you. Instead, Aspiration offers a spend and save account, a debit card with some pretty awesome perks. I've seen cards that allow rounding up purchases to save, which is awesome. 
But I already save. What I'm not doing is planting trees. And with Aspiration, I can now round up purchases and do just that. With the Aspiration Plus card, they'll even buy carbon credits to offset all your gas purchases if you're not quite all electric just yet. Aspiration is also a B-certified corporation, member of 1% for the planet, and even pledges 10% of their profits for charity. But don't think their awesome mission means you're getting anything less than stellar service. With access to a network of over 55,000 ATMs, FDIC insurance on your deposits, cutting edge security, this is finance for the next century. As a special offer for our viewers, go to joinaspiration.com slash Vinci or click on the link in the description to get $50 when you sign up and start planting trees with every purchase today. The eruption itself could send a literal earth shattering sound wave throughout the region. When Krakatoa erupted in 1883, it released a roar so loud, the sound traveled nearly 4,800 kilometers across the Indian Ocean, shattering windows and deafening people in its path. And it wasn't even close to the size of even the smallest supervolcano. These devastating effects could collapse buildings and wipe out power grids, which could affect an even wider region than the base eruption itself. Unlike other types of volcanoes, which leave massive craters as they erupt, Yellowstone and other supervolcanoes have what are called caldera eruptions. As the magma chambers empty, the ground begins to collapse in on itself. So, Basically, the Midwest is toast at this point, but it doesn't stop there. The Tower of Ash that shot out of Yellowstone, it contains sulfur aerosols that reflect sunlight, which can actually decrease global temperatures. So, some good news. When Mount Pinatubo on the island of Luzon in the Philippines erupted in 1991, it actually caused global temperatures to drop by about one degree Fahrenheit between 1991 and 1993 and that one was only registered a 6 on the VEI scale. A supervolcano like Yellowstone could lead to a drop as much as 15 degrees Celsius. That's the difference between Rio and Anchorage, Alaska. Killing crops, obliterating tropical forests, and utterly wiping out animal species the world over. Oh, and by the way, that sulfur dioxide in the ash, it's highly toxic meaning it will poison any nearby water supplies like, I don't know, the Colorado River. But because the plume is so high, it's not going to stay put. It's in the jet stream. This means the eruption is going global. Eruptions this large can create their own continental scale wind field, pushing ash more than 1,000 kilometers against the prevailing ambient wind field. And these toxic sulfides, not only can they poison groundwater, but because they're now in the atmosphere, those gases will eventually produce acid rain. When the Laki volcano erupted in 1783 in Iceland, it rained down so much sulfuric acid that it devastated farmlands and wiped out half of all livestock. So now we've got acid rain, we've got global temperatures dropping by 15%, we've got a cloud of ash covering fields, roads, and destroying power grids. In fact, the UN estimates that if just one of these super eruptions were to occur, the entire world could run out of food in just over two months. And even if you were somehow able to survive all of this, all you'd be left with is a barren, toxic wasteland of a planet with no food, no electricity, poisoned groundwater, and useless topsoil. So we did say NASA has a plan, right? Thankfully, yes. And it's one of those ideas that's truly so crazy, it just might work. Developed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JBL, in 2015, the idea has been dubbed Defending Human Civilization from Supervolcanic Eruptions. Straight into the point. I like it. The idea is to basically stop these super eruptions at the source. Volcanoes like Yellowstone erupt when molten rock, aka magma, rises to the surface when Earth's tectonic plates shift. When heat rises from the Earth's core, it builds up within the volcanic chambers, building up tons and tons of pressure. When the pressure becomes too much, it explodes. NASA's plan is to use hydrothermal circulation at Yellowstone or other supervolcano sites to cool the underlying magma and relieve some of that pressure. How would they do this? Well, they'd start with drilling a series of wells around the perimeter of the volcano, some of the deepest in the world, reaching up to 10 kilometers below the Earth's surface. They then pump cold water down into the wells, which over time could cool a ring of rock around the magma chamber similar to how coolant in your car carries heat away from the engine. 
And as an added bonus, since the water is heated to around 340 degrees Celsius as it moves through the chamber, NASA hopes to loop it back through the wells and use it to drive an electric generator, essentially transforming Yellowstone into a giant geothermal power station and ultimately paying for itself. Huh, how about that? Now, as of right now, this plan is only very much in its experimental phases and the jury is out on whether it would actually solve the problem. Some scientists suspect that drilling into a supervolcano to mitigate a threat could have much worse unknown consequences, including inducing the very eruption we're trying to prevent. Plus the project in its entirety is projected to take about 16,000 years and cost a whopping 3.5, 3.7 billion dollars to complete, about 20% of NASA's current annual budget. The reality is that scientists are unsure of the likelihood of super eruptions like this even happening, in the near future at least. Many experts agree that the conditions at Yellowstone seem to indicate that a very large scale eruption like this may not happen even within the next 100,000 years, as most of the magma under the park is too crystalline to erupt anyway. But what do you think? Should we be taking the threat of a super eruption more seriously? After all, Yellowstone is not the only super volcano out there. And what do you think of NASA's plan? Too expensive? Too risky? Or worth it all to prevent global destruction? Sound off in the comment section below and let us know what you think. So that is a look at NASA's insane plan to stop the next super volcano. Now, I don't think anybody should be alarmed or have any reason to believe that Yellowstone or any other super volcanoes are going to erupt in our lifetimes. But clearly, this is an interesting story because I think we as a species have come a long ways and we are now not just trying to survive or make enough energy to power our cities. Now we're looking at the next evolution of our advancement. And that extends into things like stopping meteor strikes or asteroids, super volcanoes, and generally controlling the weather and our own circumstances here on Earth. So whenever I hear stories about this topic, I think it's wildly fascinating. And the reality is, a lot of us probably couldn't really imagine how bad a super volcano could be. As we talked about before, you might think, oh, I have solar panels on my roof and I'm, I have a Tesla power wall. All of that would be rendered pretty much useless because you'd be covered in so much ash and it wouldn't just be for like a day or a week. We're talking years. It could be four or five years that you're covered in ash. So the reality is what sort of infrastructure and what sort of a society could survive four years without sunlight? Um, yeah, underground maybe. Not very easy, right, as you can imagine. So I do think it's interesting to think about this stuff, at least as a thought experiment, because the cool thing is, as they mentioned with Yellowstone, maybe becomes a huge geothermal power station, not just a mitigation for a unlikely scenario. This also extends into our reach into space, by the way. If there was an asteroid that was destined to collide with Earth, in our entire history on this planet, we've never been equipped to stop that. And if you look at all the crater marks on the moon and on Earth as well, we've been hit numerous times over the years. But now we're at a point where we could actually do something about it. And that's pretty exciting. The problem really always comes down to people and their focus. Most people think about the here and now. We're suffering now, there's poverty now, and these are all very valid concerns. We have tons of issues to deal with today. So what ends up normally happening is when you talk about pie in the sky ideas to stop an unlikely scenario into the future, budgeting and government priorities typically take a hit. Kind of a fun story and I'm hoping you guys had a good time with it. What do you think? Please let us know in your comment section. And also a big thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon and our channel members. We call you guys our two-bit tribe. We appreciate all of you. You're on our Discord servers. You help write scripts. You give us ideas. We all talk and spend time together. And if you want to be a rock star supporter of this show, please consider joining us on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member. Links will be in the description. And generally take a look around. We have a ton of cool videos that we think you'll probably like. And until next time, I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci. And remember, the future is going to be awesome.